Welcome to a video on procedural generation in Twine. In this video I'm going to cover passages and using JavaScript. There are many different ways to approach procedural generation of content in Twine. This example covers using passages as storage and JavaScript functions as a method of generating content. This example uses Sugarcube 2.2.0 or 2.21.0 story format. It's also heavily based on the work of Tony Vale uh, from the following paper. Additional information can be found on the GitHub page. I'm pulling a number of different information from this available uh, collection of databases of possible actions and including those in this uh, example here. You can get more information at the GitHub page. In SugarCube, the story.get function is used to get a passage object representing the passage by name. Passage objects have properties like text and title to get their contents. We see here, this is a story about A and B. Let's pause and go look at the content of this passage. We see two different uses of the set macro here. We're setting story content to story get and by name a passage A and B story. Let's close this and go look at the passage A and B story. A and B story has as its content, this is a story about A and B. As we saw when we looked at the presentation here, this is a story about A and B. So closing this, going back to story get, we see we can use story get to get a passage object represented by the name of some passage. We can also use its property text to get the text content of that passage. And we're displaying it here. Using story get then, we get a passage object, we can use its text to get its internal content. Let's move on. The text property, as I was discussing, of passage object is a string. Using the split function, a string can be broken into an array containing the contents of the string split according to some other string. Usually it's a delimiter, that is something that delimiters between one thing and another. Using the third entry in the array, a turn against B, using the 125th entry of the array, A learn from B. Let's go look at this code. We see an additional line here based on the previous code that was shown in the other passage. We're getting a passage by name, we're getting its content using the text property, and now we're splitting that string into an array using the split function, and in this case, a delimiter based on the new line character. Using that then, we can take a long list of things and another passage, split it into an array, and then get entries into that array based on different indexes. In these two cases here, we see index of three and an index of 125. Using these index then, we can get the content, the entries in that array. But let's go look at the content of before actions. Before actions are based on the databases I mentioned from the project I pulled these from, available on GitHub. The long list of possible actions that can happen between two parties, based on a very generalized narrative structure. Two things that can possibly happen. Abandon or feared by, kill, love, and underestimate, fear, resent, a long list of things. And I only pulled a few of them. There are hundreds of possible combinations here. So that was our before action. Again, getting a passage object representing the passage before actions, getting its content, splitting that content in an array, getting entries into that array based on indexes. To get a random entry within an array, we can use the length of the array as a maximum when using the random function in SugarCube. The random function in SugarCube allows us to supply a minimum value and a maximum value and, and, and gives us, as a result as a, <laughs> of output, a number within that range inclusively. So we can set a minimum, set a maximum, get some random number in between. In this case, coming back to the content of this passage, we see now in two additional lines. We're getting the content, we're getting the passage object representing some passage. We're getting its internal content using the text property. We're splitting that content from a string into an array. And we're now setting a random number based on that array from zero up to its length. 
then we're getting a random entry based on that random number using that as an index to that array. Using all this code here, we can pick some random interaction using before actions as our basis of something that can happen between two parties. And we see that here, A, random entry B, which we saw in the presentation as A are photographed by B, some random narrative possibility. Moving on, we can look at the include macro. The include macro is used to call or include the contents of one passage in another. Entwine is a common way to create modular content. That is, we can break up things in Twine, put them in other passages, and then use the include macro to pull them in when we need them. And here we actually see the start of our narrative structure. Very simple, perhaps too simple, three, three act structure here over before action, an after action, and a closure point. We see A a point B, B are twisted by A, A share stories with B. As far as the three act structure go, that's not terribly bad as far as any, <laughs> any uh, story might go. All of this generated though by code. So let's go look at this. As I mentioned, using the include macro allows us to include or call other functionality and other passages. It allows us to break it up in a modular way. So we see three uses of the include macro in this own passage. We're including before action generation, after action generation, and closure point generation. Let's go look at each of those passages in turn. Looking at before action generation, we see the similar code that we've been seeing across other passages in this example. We're getting a passage object representing before actions. We're getting its text content using the text property. We're splitting a string into an array based on the new line character. We're getting a random number from zero to its length. Then we're getting a random entry in that array based on that random number. In this case, we're setting random before action to be whatever that is. Closing this and looking at after action generation, we see exact, we see exact similar setup, but with a different passage. Again, getting the passage object, getting its textual content, splitting that content in an array, picking a random number based on its length, getting a random entry. Finally, in closure point generation, we see the same construction again. Get a passage object, get its text content, split that content, find a random number, get a random entry based on that random number. We see then, looking at this, we can break this up then as a series of steps that we've included in here using passages as storage. Go get a passage that we've constructed with possible actions, find a random one, bring it back in. Get an after action, bring it back in. Get a closure point, bring it back in. In each case is here, in each case here, and as a general model here, we're using passages as storage, JavaScript within Sugarcube, as a method of creating a story structure using procedural generation, randomness in this case, to just pick an entry from these different tables we constructed, and then looking at all of these, constructing a narrative across them. A, random before action B, B, random after action A, A, random closure point B. This has been a review of how to create procedural generation in Twine using passages as storage, in this case, before actions, after actions, and closure points as a list of possible verb combinations and possible narrative constructions between two different parties, A and B in this example. Then using JavaScript and sugar, in Sugarcube in this example, using primarily story.get to get a passage object, get its textual content using the text property, splitting it from a string into an array, and using random to find in Sugarcube between a minimum zero and a maximum the length of that previous array, and then combining all of these techniques together using the include macro to break them apart before action generation, after action generation, closure point generation, and building a story across all of these using before action generation, after action, and closure point uh, as the three different points of a three-act structure here. A very simple overview of how to create this technique using procedural generation, in this case randomness, 
to procedurally generate a new story every time someone would run this based on randomness, the include macro, story.get, and coming back to passages storage. Thanks for watching.